Dear Church Dear Church We're standing with one spirit together And we will sing All praise to Jesus, our Savior The King of Kings He is holy, worthy God Almighty We sing praise thee, our God He of glory He is holy, worthy God Almighty We sing praise thee our God, King of glory, dear church, let's praise the name of Jesus, dear church, the King of kings, oh dear church. All right, friends, you guys got me today. I'm so shaking right now, but it's good. Hi, friends. Hello. This is actually my family. I I think I committed with, like, to Jesus, my life. It's because of English worship exists. So this is amazing. So like what Ruth say, maybe somebody else can share testimony. Maybe somebody else can preach one day, okay? So I want this as, as in like empowerment for all of you guys. Like if I can do it, you guys can do it too, all right? I want to sh shout out the, I don't, I don't think anybody mentioned it, but Roxane and Aaron sing that song. It's so beautiful. Peran made all of the music and everything, of course. He's like the music genius right here. So, hello guys. I'm Simply, if you guys didn't know me. I'm Simply. You guys probably saw me a lot in the stage though, like with the worship team. Shout out to them. And also with the media team, because I just love them. Being invisible sometimes, it's nice. <laughs> what? It's good though. Well, um... Make sure you guys come back next week. <laughs> I want to say it <laughs> because it's probably going to be better, okay? <laughs> um, um, this week, uh, we're going to continue the Evisions like we see the Dear Church series. We're on Evision chapter 3 right now, and it's so exciting because, I don't know, when I read the whole chapter of Evision 3, it's just, uh, I just want to repent and then just like, God help me, okay? So I don't know what it looks like for you today, but I'm really praying that this is going to be something that can empower you guys too, because I got empowered by the letter of, like, from Paul, okay? So <laughs> before we start, let's us pray one more time, because I need to, you know, God to help me, all right? So let's pray, guys. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you that we can gather around together here with your spirit in it. We thank you that you are here right now, God. And we thank you that you want to speak to us, God. So we want to listen. We want to obey, God. We want to open our heart and our mind. Lord, I pray for myself that you're just going to help me, Lord, to just speak through this family of God in this place, God. We believe that one word from you is really important, Jesus. So we want to hear and we want to seek that, that word from you, God. And we thank you, Jesus. Um, let your will be done in this place, Father. In your name, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's go. Ah, all right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is me. <laughs> it's a little bit different with Pastor Vanessa and Pastor Jamie. So, all right. Let's read the first um, verse. From chapter 3, verse 1 and verse 2, if you don't have the Bible, it's going to be on the screen. It's all good. All got covered by the media team. Shout out to them again. <laughs> so let's read it. I'm going to read it for you. But sometimes, okay, I'm going to say sorry first because English is not my first language. So I'm not going to like, you know, like weird. You know, accent is going to be out. So, all right. All right. Let's read it together. When I think of all this, I, Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, for the benefit of you Gentiles, assuming by the way that you know God gave me the special responsibility of extending his grace to you Gentiles. I, I got my first question of the day. Have you ever left your house and forgot to bring your keys? Yay, we relate. I did that all the time. Like, not now, because I, I already find a way to, like, put it together with my motorbike key. So, like, as I go with my bike, I bring my keys. But when I was little, this is my first experience with my parents. I don't know why my parents didn't bring the keys. 
confused. But at that time, they didn't breathe the key, so it made the three of us locked out of the house. And then at, at the same time, we expecting, so my brother lives in the house at that day, and then we're expecting that he will open the door for us, okay? So we can come in. But, but of course, he fell asleep, and it's a deep sleep. So like my mom trying to call, like, like call him all, like so many times, and then I tried to like scream and then just like knock. You know, if Elsa is already exists at that time, I'm probably going to say, do you want a bit? No, but I didn't sing that song. But it's just like stressful, and we start like blaming the, like my, 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 my friend, my friend, my brother. Oh, my gosh. Okay, but at that time... When we, we start like already like angry, you know, like complaining, like why is he like, you know, just start like my brother is just like a troublemaker, you know, like just starting as a, you know, like little sister. Of course, I'm going to say that. And then my dad, though, on the other hand, he's like the smart guy in this story. He's like, well, what about let's just look around, OK, and see like if there's any window open or like, you know, trying to find a way. And then I realized, like, wow, I never think about that. <laughs> you know, like, we have windows and stuff. But all of the windows were, were locked. But there's this one window that he installed. So he's kind of know, like, if there's any possibility. And then he got to be able to open it. And then he lifted me up. It's so cute because I'm, like, small, you know. Like, and then, like, he lifted me up so I can open the door from the inside. And that's just, like, become my like core memories. I don't know about you guys, but I don't have a lot of like memories with my family. But at that time, that unique time, weird to, <laughs> like it's just weird time. It's just like personal to me. And it's like, wow, he can use this time of like my complaining as a bonding time with me. It's an opportunity. I got to see my my dad as a, like, wow, I can rely on him. Like he's he is so smart, you know, and all of this thing, I get, con like, I gain a lot of confidence because of this moment, like, oh, there's a lot of ways to do something, you know, like, it's just amazing. So the question for you guys, like, what if what feels like an obstacle is actually an opportunity? What if what feels like an obstacle is actually an opportunity? I feel all of us can agree that the grandpa Paul, <laughs> I call it grandpa Paul, because he's probably old, oh, of course, older than me. <laughs> he is always making the most of his situation, right? That's what he is. He was in prison, so making the most of our situation, that's something that I really want to encourage all of us, including me. Like, God, I want to making the most of my situation, whatever it is. Paul word this words in the prison what and yet even in the hard times paul didn't sit in discouragement and said he viewed this Im imper imprisonment okay i got it as an opportunity it's so hard that word for me to advance and share the gospel wasn't it beautiful if paul is was not there i don't think we we get to read this guys today it's amazing and how many of us today feel trapped, unfocused in like life circumstances, the family struggles, financial problems, you know, and all of this drama with friendship and relationship. And we didn't see that somebody next to you need Jesus. I don't want to miss the opportunity. I feel like I just want to cry right now, okay? And Paul could have sinned his prison sentence as the end of his mission. Instead, he believed that God was in, still in control, right? Did, did this situation in your life make you feel like God is not paying attention? Sometimes I feel that, like, so many times. I feel like sometimes in my life, like what Ruth say, I feel like... Um, like pandemic it's so lonely for me like i i didn't got a chance to meet with my friends and then like sometimes like i had my scripty time at that that day like i still remember how stressful it is it's just like 
so like a lot of drama in it and I felt like that circumstances want to take over but I forgot that th there's a big picture of it like Paul he like we want to choose to believe that God has placed us on purpose to show grace to someone to share the gospel to someone some of you guys know that okay that I was born in Sunda, growing up in Sundanese. Sundanese, if you guys don't know, is one of the biggest unrich people group here in Indonesia. I am 100% Javanese, y'all. Can you see my face? <laughs> so Javanese. But I grew up in Sundanese. I'm like, I still remember like one time, um, I moved to one high school and I'm the only Christian. I was super lonely. I'm like, what is this? Why am I here? Um, I didn't realize back then like that God placed me there so people got to see Jesus in me. I never, I never realized that until I was here. Um, the first Mission Sunday here, all of these people pray for Sundanese and I'm like, I, don't, I never even pray for my people. That just break my heart. And man, if Grandpa Paul had not been in prison, I don't know, like, I don't think, like, us, you know, can hear about this gospel. Um, and what if your current situation is not the end, but the setup for God, for God wants to do through you? What if? Man, it's just so beautiful. It's more than that we think about. It's more than the dreams that we have. It's bigger than that. Let's continue read on the first three and four. As I briefly wrote earlier, God himself revealed his mysterious plan to me. As you read what I have written, you will understand my insight into this plan regarding Christ. Paul reverses a lot of mystery in this chapter. And what this is more interesting to me because I love mystery. Like since I was little, I really want to become a detective. <laughs> like trying to find everything, you know. And I love Sherlock Holmes. I don't know if you guys know that. <laughs> um, but the Greek word here that Paul um, used is mysterian. I don't know if I said Right, but it's mystery, and that's where uh, the mystery word comes from. And it means it was hidden, but is now in the open, revealed for all to see. So this mystery is not like secret that we keep to ourselves. In fact, Paul explained that it's been revealed. Beautiful. And this is the mystery, y'all. Um, on the first six and seven, and this is the God's plan, both Gentiles and Jews who believe the good news share equally in the riches inherited by God's children. Both are part of the same body and both enjoy the promise of blessings because they belong to Christ Jesus. By God's grace and mighty power, I haven't been given the privilege of serving him by spreading this good news. This chapter is super personal to me because in the NIV Bible uh, version, it's the title of this chapter is God Marvelous Plan for the Gentiles. This Gentiles is me and you. This is the Gojek driver that take you this morning to church. Gentile, this Gentiles that, talk, that he's talking about is also like your family, your neighbor, your classmates, the people that at your workplace, they all need to hear this. Jesus already died for us. Like we can be so happy because, man, he died for my sin. But also this is not only for me. It's also for you guys, for all of the people around us. Jesus died for all of us, for everyone, so we can be safe. The mystery that Paul mentioned here is that God's grace was not just for the God's people back then. 
but also for everyone to experience. Grace is for you just as much as it is for anyone else. The gospel is for you just as it is as for anyone else. Jesus is for you, but also for anyone else. The mystery of grace is not a and like VIP event. It's a, it's a gift, man, for everyone. Whatever their background is, in Christ we all share equally in God's riches. I want everybody to say to the person next to you, you belong to the table. table. Nice. <laughs> Yes, all of us belong to the table. If Jesus has a party, you know, like dinner party, all of us invite it. It's not like, you know, you need to be a certain kind of person to be invited. No, it's, it's not like that. It didn't work like that. And okay, during the sermon prep, too, I listened to this one song called Heart of God by, I think, Hillsong Young and Free. And then the, there's this one um, line your kindness lead us to repentance, okay? So if his kindness lead us to repentance, this chapter remind me that his grace give us a purpose. Ah, that is just so beautiful. Because, like, I've been in that place, like, identity crisis. Maybe some of you right there right now. I'm, like, on my 20s. i like, what is this life? You know, like, what is my dream? Like, I don't have any dreams. But, man, God gave me purpose. And that purpose is bigger than any dreams. It's just amazing. Verse 8. Though I am the least deserving of all God's people, he graciously gave me the privilege of telling the Gentiles about the endless treasure available to them in Christ. Paul knew that God's grace was not just something to enjoy privately. It was meant to flow through him to others. So it's not stopping you, like not stopping Paul. This is the reality now. We can, you know, like read the letter. That's amazing. But like how often do we receive God's blessing and just stop there? How often we experience the presence of God on Sunday. You know, we like put our hands up and that's it. We go home and then just back to normal how often we receive breakthrough and miracles and healings god answer our prayers but just stop there god's grace is not just for us to keep guys it means to move through us to bless others in my life though like there is no bigger blessings than knowing Jesus as my savior. You can tell, like, maybe I have all of this, like, story, you know, I would love to share, like, all of the testimony and, like, all of my experiences. But if I die, like, tomorrow or something, I want everybody in my life to know that Jesus is, like, the most, like, beautiful thing in my life that happened to me. That's it. Knowing Jesus and believing in Jesus changed my life. It changed my perspective. It changed my eternal life, guys. It changed my final destination. He gave me a purpose. A purpose that bigger than, like, all my dreams. To see this nation, Indonesia, and to see, like, my people, my Sudanese friends, to know Jesus, to hear about the gospel, that's my dream. And I know it's big. It's like, how is that even possible, you know? It's impo- like it's possible through Jesus. It is big. It, it is crazy. That's why it's a big purpose. It's God's purpose because it's crazy. So what about you? Like, what's your dreams? What's your purpose? We are called to share the good news from just every like you know every daily activity maybe like with bunching someone you know like going to school bunching somebody or like I don't know like invite somebody to your lunch time talk with them I love Friday night because like we got a lot of opportunity you know to just be with someone having fun together 
core groups. I love all of the core group leaders. They're working really hard to just like invite all of these people, chat people until they block you, you know? <laughs> Why not? That's maybe the suffering that we're going to take today, you know? We, I want to encourage all of us to just like make ourselves available. Just make ourselves available. We might like... I may not be like an apostle or like a pastor, yet still God gave me a lot of opportunity and it's the same thing for you guys. And I just don't want the enemy trap me, okay? I don't want the enemy trap you guys too with all of the ordinary things. Oh, this is the normal way, like what people do it, you know, like after graduated we work, you know? Of course, yeah. And then, like, go to the gym. I saw Hendra go to the gym yesterday. <laughs> I mean, he's super, guys, he is super athletic. Not me, so. Our God is extraordinary God. We are called to do extraordinary things. And we should, like, this is my confidence, you know? Because, like, man, this is our God. Sometimes we just forgot, I think, like, how big our God is. That's why, like, we need to remember that all the time. I still remember listening to some of your story, like going to KKN or like internship for the first time. And then you guys just wrestling with like truth and justice. Something is wrong. Like, God, please pray for me. Something is wrong here. Like, and yet God used you guys. You guys done with your internship. And then there's a lot of testimony. I talked with Tina, like some, like, other like last week I think like she has some moment that's just confusing and I was like man maybe that's an opportunity for God to do something and yes exactly that's what God do when we see the opportunity and we say yes to it man God will do it it's not even me anymore it's God and I will never stop to encourage you guys to speak boldly in love and if you're, like, nervous with your, like, sharing your faith, just remember God gives both opportunity and power. Not only the opportunity. It's not like the God, like, just do it, you know. No, I know that's probably our experience in life. But God is with us. God is in us. And he will do a lot of amazing things through ourselves. It's amazing. What a privilege. Let's go to the verse 12. Verse 12. Because of Christ our, and our faith in him, we can now come boldly and confidently into God's presence. Ah, beautiful. I feel like, I think there's a lot of time in my life, like during the worship time, it's just like, I'm scared, you know. When I was, I grew up uh, as a, tra like, from traditional church, and what I know back then, God is so powerful. So when I sing, I was like, whoa, that's so dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't want God to touch me. I'm scared. Like, what is happening? But it's not like that, guys. He is powerful, but he's also gentle. He's loving. He's like... He's like really ready to welcome you guys, to welcome me. I'm super thankful for that. So you guys, we can come confidently because we know who we believe. Yeah? When we know who, who he is, I don't think there's going to be another reason for us not to miss Sunday or like to come to TNP or like to pray on your own time, like everywhere, anywhere. So beautiful. So I do believe that God is still touching lives today. He's still doing miracles today and bringing healing. So as one body, I feel like this is our homework, everybody. We need to help each, other's, each other to acknowledge this, like that God is still moving right now. God is still working right now. Sometimes I forgot, so I need somebody else to speak to me, okay? Like, Remind me, like today, like during the rally, everybody pray for me because this is my first time. And yes, like I, I need that. I need that, you know, I need that confidence. I need that faith. I think 
Pastor Jamie mentioned that last week. And it's just like, that's true. Like, that's why the body of Christ is really important. Verse 13. So please don't lose heart because of my trials here. I'm suffering for you, so you should feel honored. Wow. Thank you, Grandpa Paul. <laughs> One of my best friends, um, she became a mother this year. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I love babies, guys. I love to carry them, but I don't like when they're crying. <laughs> it's scary. <laughs> I feel like, oh, it's because of me, you know? I'm just, I don't want to see like my best friend or like your kids one day, you know, mad about me. You know, I want them to love me. <laughs> but I felt if there's mom here, shout out to all of you guys. You guys are amazing. My mom, I don't think she's watching though. <laughs> but <laughs> let's go. <laughs> um, as a mom, you guys probably know the joy of new life. That's at least that's what I um, know. Like that's what I hear from my best friend, from my mom, from the movie. You know, like as a mom. Like the pain of childbirth, the pain, the discomfort being pregnant for like nine months and all those things, it's going to be quiet into like the joy of a new life. And I felt like that's the point is like though the pain is real, the purpose behind it makes it meaningful. And the same with what Paul did in the prison. Like, I don't know how painful he is, but I bet it's so painful because, like, it's different, a different era in our life. Paul was in prison because he preached the gospel. It's because he preached the gospel. Now we can share it, really. Like, this is amazing. But he told um, the Evisions at that day not to lose heart. But it takes obedience, you guys. We see an opportunity, but how many of us, so many times when there's an opportunity, I felt like so many times, God, don't talk to me because I don't think I'm going to obey. <laughs> like, that's happened too sometimes, you know? So it, took, like, it takes obedience to do God's will. And I know it's, sometimes it's scary, it's hard, but it takes obedience we think, sometimes we think like how painful it is first, you know, before like we start to obey. Well, but obedience to Christ is not easy, but it has eternal value. It has eternal value, friends. We want to see that neighbor in the heaven one day. I want to see my best friend go to heaven one day with me. We're going to have a party, you know. I want to see all of you guys and all of your parents and all of your auntie and you know, all of them. <sighs> so do you want to suffer for someone to know Jesus? That's probably so hard to catch. Hard question. Do you want to think of the way to help them to be able to know Jesus? Do you know, do you want to like invite someone to core groups? You want to invite someone to the week of prayer because it's happening soon. It's crazy sometimes to think that like our trials are not meaningless, but they are part of God's mission. They are not meaningless. So if you're thinking like, oh, I'm just wasting time here. I'm just going to give up. Uh-uh. No. It, there's something. There's something there. There's eternal value there in our trials. But... Again, don't wake up tomorrow and try to find trials, okay? Don't you ever do that. Let the trials come, okay? <laughs> the um, idea is like shift our perspective, okay? To like God's perspective. Not to find the trials, but like shift our perspective. When the trials come, we have the confidence and we know like, all right, God, what are you going to do right here? What can I do right here? We're almost done. I'm sorry, guys. Okay. We're almost done. And this is going to be our, uh, like my favorite part of this chapter. Because literally, Paul, Paul prayed for all of us, the Gentiles. It's so beautiful. 
And the first 20. Now to him who is able to do immeasurable, that's my favorite word, more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. God's power is within you, guys. It's within me. And we can accomplish a lot of immeasurable things, more than we can ask or imagine. That's so beautiful. And every day is a new opportunity. There's a new opportunity. And we should go deeper and deeper and deeper in our understanding about it. We are not just going to make it through, but he's going to work through us. All right? I know there's beautiful song, you're going to make it through. I love that song. It's true, though. That's like the confidence. But again, remember, we're not just going to make it through. God is going to work through us. That's why I really love Pastor Jamie. I think say this again and again that one word from the Lord is really important. It's more than important than anything. Cuz I felt like like God's grace is given to us not just for survival but for a purpose. Right? God's grace is not given to us just for survival. It's for a purpose. He doesn't just want to get us through the hard times. He wants to use those times to work through us, to bless others, to share the gospel. And this week, let, let's ask God to show you where he wants his grace to flow through you. Ask God, who should I invite this week to the week of prayer or like to Sunday service, to core group, to your lunchtime? Verse 16 and 17, I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your root will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. I just talked with Bree the other day, like how big trees going to go, you know, like grow. It depends on the roots. That's what she said. I was like, Oh, wow, that makes sense now. <laughs> you know, like your roots need to go down. Your time with the Lord needs to be serious. Nah, I don't think it's only Sunday, but it's good. Sunday is good too. It, and what if um, this week is your opportunity to draw closer, to bring all of your fears and doubts or dreams into his presence. What if? That's the title of the sermon. What if? Because I just give you a lot of what if, what if, what if. I hope this is, can help you guys to just like think through all of the things that God gave to us. Again, I love, I just love every time when Pastor Jamie say about like one word from God is really important. Because really though what Paul did right here in this in his life, he can do all of these hard things because he got it. He got that one word from God. He got that encounter with Jesus. He had the revelation. A moment with God is really important. And the same thing with us, all of us. You guys can hear me talking about sharing the good news praying for the lost, da, 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 for so many times, like thousand times, but never do it. It's because probably we didn't hear anything from God yet. So I really want to encourage all of us to, man, take some time, like during the week of prayer or like in your own time to just get space for, for God to speak to you. Ephesian chapter 3, uh, verse 14 to 21, contains Paul's beautiful prayer for the church. After this, Pastor Vanessa will help all of us to just respond to the time. Um, but I really want to pray for all of us. If I can have the worship team to come in. I cannot believe I said that. Ah, that's so beautiful. Um, we're going to... 
I'm going to lead us in prayer. Can we all stand up? Is that what it is? Stand up, guys. Let's pray together. Father, I pray that from your glorious and limited resources, you will empower us with inner strength through your spirit. Let Christ make his home in our hearts as we trust in him. Help our roots grow down into your love and keep us strong. Give us the power to understand how wide, how long, how high, and deep your love is. May we experience the love of Christ that surpasses understanding so that we may be filled with all the fullness of life and power that comes from you. Now all glory to you, God, who is able through your mighty power to accomplish infinitely more than we ask or think. Thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Let's just sing a song. Let's just fix our eyes to him. Let's worship the Lord together. Draw me close to you. that simply said that I think um, are really powerful. She said that we come with boldness because we know who we're coming to, right? That we know who this God is. And um, because we know who he is, we know what he is for us. But he's not that just for us. He's for that for everyone, right? 
that he is the savior, that he is this friend, that he is their hope, not just for us, but for everyone. And what if the obstacles between us and sharing this God with someone else are just an opportunity for us to know him better? What if that fear is just an opportunity for us to rely on his power more? What if that selfishness that says this is just for me is an opportunity for us to become more like him, selfless, you know? What if that blindness that we have to the opportunities are an opportunity for us to see him and to see like him? Because this God is the same God for us as he is for the millions of people around us. And what if this message, this thing, is an opportunity for us to become more like him because he did everything for us so that we could be with him, so that we could know him? What if? What if we put our ex excuses aside? What if we put our fears aside? What if we put our plans inside and say, God, I want to know that you are near, but I want others to know that too. So as we sing, as we continue to sing, would you make that your prayer? God, would you help me to see the obstacles in my life as an opportunity, as an opportunity to become more like you, as an opportunity to share? Would you show me, God, that you're near so that I can show other people that you're near because you didn't just die for me? So we're going to continue to sing this song. And would you just make that your prayer? God, I don't want to live in the excuses of my obstacles anymore. I want to be, I want your blessings and your kingdom to flow through me. So let's continue. Would you make that your prayer as we continue to sing? Draw me close to you. Never let me go. Say that I'm your friend. You are my desire. No one else will do. No one else will do. Cause nothing else can take your place. the warmth of your embrace help me find the way bring me back to you today. And commit today, God, I want to see you. 
And I want your blessings. I want everything that you have for me, but I want it to flow through me, God. I, I commit today, Lord, to do your will, to be empowered by your love. I commit today to know that everything I'm looking for is found in you and that because you give me everything, I can give it out to others that this grace that has been given to me can flow through me to others, that this gospel and this good news that has been given to me, it can flow through me to others so that they may understand how big and wide your love is, so that the people in my course, so that the people in my class, so that the people in my workplace would know that you are near to them too. God, we commit ourselves to you. We commit ourselves, Lord God, that we might be your conduits of blessing and grace. You are all we need. You are all they need. Lord God, help us. Help us, Lord God, to not just keep your blessings to ourselves. Help us, Lord God, to know that in our suffering there is eternal purpose, that in our problems there is an opportunity for the name of Jesus to be lifted up. We commit ourselves to you, God. You have committed yourself to us. Help us. Give us the desire and the power to do your will because the same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives in us, empowering us to be your servants, to be your people. We commit ourselves to you today. God, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for those that have come before us who have suffered so that we might know. God, thank you for all those that have throughout history bore witness to you. And God, we commit, it's our turn now. It's our turn now. Do with us what you may, that your name would be glorified here in Jogja, in Indonesia, in Honduras, in Nigeria, in, in, um, in Australia, in America, wherever we are from, Lord God. We commit ourselves to you. Thank you that you have committed yourself to us. You are all we want. You are all we've ever needed. Thank you, Lord that you have been so generous. We commit ourselves to you, God. Help us to know that you're near. We can't do it alone and we don't have to. Thank you for that, Jesus. Maybe you're here today and you have never heard this. You didn't know that there was a God that was committed to you. There was a God who graciously gave himself up for you, that there is a God that has everything that you need. So maybe we start right now in this place. Maybe you don't know, or maybe you knew, but you walked away from him. Maybe you've tried this on your own and you realize, man, I, I need this God. I need Jesus because I need purpose in my life. I need freedom. I need hope. And man, I'm here to tell you that, that this God came near. This God came near to you. That you, all you have to do is admit that you are a sinner, that you cannot do this without him. All you have to do is believe. You don't have to make a sacrifice. You don't have to go to a special place. There's not a special ceremony. All you have to do is believe right? And commit to follow him. Admit, believe, commit. Because anyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And so if that's you today, and you say, I'm ready. I want this new life. This thing that we've been talking about, yeah, that's for me. I want to give you an opportunity to say a prayer. We're going to say it all together. The prayer is not magical. It doesn't save you. But it is a proclamation of what God is doing in your life. So if that's you today, would you pray this prayer with me? Will we all pray this prayer together? Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. I believe on the cross. You took my sin, my shame, and my guilt, and you died for it. You faced hell for me. So I wouldn't have to. You rose from the dead to give me a place in heaven, a purpose on earth, and a relationship with the Father. Today, Lord Jesus, I turn from my sin to be born again. God is my Father. Jesus is my Savior. 
The Holy Spirit is my helper. The Bible is my guide. And heaven is my home. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we just thank the Lord? Thank you, God, that you save us. Thank you, God, that there is hope in you. Thank you, God, that everything that we are looking for is found in you, that our sin is no more, that our old self is no more. We are free. Can you just thank the Lord? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that we are alive in you, God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you that there is purpose, that our, in our problems there is purpose, in our suffering there is purpose that in our highs and our lows there is purpose because of you. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Simply, for sharing that word with us. You would have never known it was your first time. You did so great. It's like empowered by the Holy Spirit. That can be you, <laughs> right? Empowered by the Holy Spirit to go to work tomorrow, to go to class tomorrow, to go to the restaurant after this, or go to the coast and proclaim the goodness of God. Amen? May we raise our hand to receive blessing from the Lord. God, we thank you. Thank you for who you are. Thank you that you are the high and mighty seated above all, but that you are also the God who is near, who has come so that us Gentiles who had no hope could have hope so that those who were far away could be brought near father i pray that we might have eyes to see you this week to see the opportunities that you placed before us and lord i pray that you would empower us to not let the opportunities go by but to step boldly into them to proclaim your goodness god i pray for my friends that they might know you that they might be empowered by you that they might be set free by you that you would bless them not so that they can keep it so that they can flow through you, them. God, I pray for their finances. I pray for their school and their work and their families and their friendships. Lord, that they might live in the overflow this week. We praise you, God. Thank you that you are so good. We love you, Jesus. It is in your name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you for worshiping with us today. If you need someone to pray with, there will be leaders here. Um, and if you want to help us set up for a week of prayer after the service, talk to Simply. <laughs> she will uh, help you. Thanks for worshiping with us. We'll see you guys next week.